It's Badminton World, the show that brings you all things badminton. As always, over the next half hour, you can get up to date with everything that's happened in badminton. And this year especially, there's plenty to report. The Olympics have drawn to a close, and after months of preparation and training, we have the final medal list from London from the badminton categories. Plus, it's a double treat this month as we sit down and chat with one of the most successful men's doubles partnerships of recent times, the Chinese superstars Chai Yun and Fu Haifeng. But the focus of this edition of Badminton World is one of the countries that has become a pillar for the sport itself. Some might say China is a dominant force, but it's countries like Korea, Malaysia and Indonesia that provide them the challenge. And it's the last of them, Indonesia, which we explore today. Badminton in Indonesia is very popular. Its popularity is only second to football. However, if we talk about the sport's overall achievements, we can say that it's the number one sport in Indonesia. We still want the Indonesian public to maintain our love for the sport of badminton. While many might think it one country, Indonesia is actually a massive archipelago of some 17,500 islands. Within that vast island chain, 33 provinces were created that act as home to over 238 million people, together making Indonesia the world's fourth most populous country. Plenty of people to pull a pool of badminton talent from, and the process has been regular and structured for over 60 years. The Indonesian Badminton Federation is the organization responsible for the huge success of badminton in the country. It was founded on May the 5th, 1951 in Bandung, and started by creating national tournaments as a platform to find the best players. Later on in 1959, the PBSI, as it's known in the country, joined the Badminton Asia Confederation, and following that also became part of the Badminton World Federation that we all know today. Indonesian badminton was at one point ranked third in the world according to BWF's rankings, and so it should, as within the country, it's more than a passion. Badminton never die in Indonesia. I believe, because to many, many candidates, if you, one time, if you come to Jakarta, you can see, you know, uh, last, last uh, two weeks ago, we, we made the circuit national. The participant, 1,600 matches. We need seven days, morning until over midnight, and two days until morning. 24 hours, non-stop. There are two main competitions, the Indonesian Open, of course, that became a Super Series event in 2007 and then achieved Premier status last year. And throughout the year, there is the Indonesian League, where true stars are produced at club level. We not have academy, but every province have the many, many club. And every month, PBASI, F national event, circuit. One year, 10 provinces made the circuit national. And then, uh, since under 19, under 17, under 15, under 13, go to the circuit national. The league was conceptualized in 2003, but only made a reality four years later. Both men's and women's clubs take part from all over the country through qualifying rounds but only eight clubs are involved in the final rounds with a format similar to the Thomas and Uber Cup. The five best clubs will qualify for the final and qualifying rounds become competitions for the other three places. Club in Indonesia banyak ya. Yes. There are a lot of badminton clubs in Indonesia and there are numerous young up and coming players. Currently, our standard has declined a bit. To me, that is normal as there will always be ups and downs. What is important is that when we are down, we must strive to improve. And when we are on top, we must try and maintain our level. I think that in Indonesia, we always work hard. 
we must emulate our mixed doubles that triumphed at the All England this year. We should all work hard to improve the standard of badminton in Indonesia. Yeah, you know the in Indonesia uh, five or six uh, big club and sponsor. One of them is Jarum Club, Jaya Raya Club. You know, uh, Tangkas Spec Club, uh, Mutiara Club, many many club. It's a system that has produced quality players for decades and helped cement Indonesia's position as one of the powerhouses of the modern game. Among the Asian countries especially, Indonesia is a juggernaut, often overriding other leading badminton Asian nations like Malaysia and Thailand for titles. All in all, Indonesia has won 13 Thomas Cup titles, three Uber Cup titles. They've come out on top of the Asian Games six times, while their men's doubles have been crowned world champions and won Olympic gold. Since, you know, many, many years ago, badminton is, you know, the only uh, kind of sport who can contribute a good um, reputation for Indonesia in the world. Uh, only uh, from badminton, we can get a gold medal from the biggest um, event in sport, like Olympic. So, so far, we only can get it from badminton. So, um, people can only, you know, put their hope to put our flag high in badminton. It's because of their high level of badminton that the Indonesian Open has proved such a success and attained premier status as a Super Series tournament, an accolade that is only reflected in four other Super Series events within the 12 event calendar every year. It's been staged on 31 occasions dating back to 1982 when it was just the Open and has been hosted by eight different cities in the past before settling on its current location, the capital of Jakarta. When I travel overseas, I get compliments and comments saying that the Jarum Indonesia Open is one of the best organized tournaments in the world. That really makes me feel proud. In terms of prize money, it may not be the highest, but in terms of organization, we feel that we are one of the best. That is why we continue to work hard to entertain our visitors and we try to ensure that their stay here is pleasant and satisfactory. Jakarta is a massive city and the perfect place for literally thousands of fans to gather and support their badminton heroes at the Open, making it a daunting venue for all the foreign players that also compete. Yeah, you can see it from the crowd in the, in the stadium. There's so many people from uh, different background. They came here and watched uh, the game. Uh, and in Indonesia, uh, we have a competition uh, in, some, in many, many islands. Uh, not, in, not only in Java, but uh, also in another island. So the crowd is very, 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 very good in every tournament. As you'd expect with such a rich tradition and history, the exploits and achievements of the players themselves are followed almost religiously by the fans who each have their own favorites. The player that I have idolized since I was a child is Taufik Daya, followed by Sony Dwi Kunchoro. I admire Taufik because he has a lot of experience and he has achieved a lot to make us proud in the international arena. Badminton. No sport comes close. We're off for a break, which means it's your chance again to tackle our badminton brain teaser. Of the 31 Indonesian Opens that have been staged since 1982, how many were won by an Indonesian player? Answer in just a bit. Coming up next, we look at some of the legends of Indonesian badminton, those that have left a legacy and those that are trying to create more for the future. So stay tuned to Badminton World. Are you Indonesia visa? Welcome back. 
welcome back to Badminton World. So how did you do with our badminton brain teaser before the break? The answer is, of the 31 tournaments, an amazing 22 wins by homegrown players, including this year's winner, Simon Santoso. Simon has made a name for himself on the current badminton circuit, but still has a ways to go if he's to reach the heights of some of Indonesia's true legends like Alan Budi and Susi Susanti. Alan Budi Kusuma excelled at world level from the late 1980s to the mid-1990s. In 1991, he was runner-up at the World Championships in Copenhagen. The year after that, he won the 1992 Olympic men's singles gold medal at Barcelona. Budi was also a member of world champion Indonesian Thomas Cup teams in 1994 and 1996. He ended up marrying another legend, Susi Susanti, who was also an Olympic gold medalist in 92. She followed her gold in Barcelona with a bronze at the 96 Games in the United States. She retired from World Badminton shortly after a marriage in 1997. Susanti was the most dominant women's singles player in the first half of the 1990s, and she's still the only female player to hold the Olympic, World Championship, and All England singles titles simultaneously. Carrying on the mantle of success has been Taufik Hidayat, who, now at 30, may be a fading force, but he's already a former world and Olympic champion in men's singles, who has also won the Indonesian Open six times. For Taufik himself, he knows that his role in badminton is about to change as the years roll by, and so he's looking to the future, taking his place in the constant development of national badminton. It first started when my parents said that they wanted a small badminton hall, but that was a long time ago. I have also desired one, but I was not sure where to start. Since then, I have started the badminton arena, and it has taken two to three years to plan and develop. I think so far it's been good. I have always lived and breathed badminton, and I feel that I should give something back to badminton and the Indonesian community. And so the Taufik Hidayat Arena was founded on 6,600 square meters of land to be used as a badminton training ground for anyone who wants to start in the sport. The arena itself was built by the architectural planner who managed to build the Urbane Indonesia Tsunami Museum in Aceh and the WWF building in Jakarta. At first, um, of course, um, Taufik is uh, our badminton legendary because so of course we accept this project with uh, very proud and this is, will be our, one of our masterpiece. And the, the, the basic idea is, uh, is to build an image of Taufik himself, I mean, as of his uh, legendary of Indonesia. And then that's why we try to um, create a figure of himself in the building. That's why we have um, his figure of jump smash. This is a real figure of his jump smash and then his um, face figure at the other side of the building, uh, but we transform it into a bit um, an architectural twist, become pixelated rendering um, images. We totally support this good effort, as there are very few athletes who would do something like this to help encourage the younger generation and to continue improving Indonesian badminton. We also think that the Taufik Hidayat Arena is a good place for young players to practice and focus on badminton. Ultimately, the more halls like the Taufik Hidayat Arena we have, the better it is for Indonesian badminton as a whole. Existing facilities at the arena are very comprehensive. Eight badminton courts along with the stands, dormitories for players, a gym, medical room, cafeteria, the Taufik Hidayat gallery, a conference room, audiovisual room, internet lounge and futsal court. The player enrollment system will be a mixture of players applying and also some that I will personally handpick. We will also provide scholarships for talented young players whereby we will sponsor their training fees, their hostel fees, and also the education fees. We will also accept those who want to enroll and pay their own fees, as we cannot afford to sponsor everyone. The Taufik Hidayat Arena is open to the public and whoever wishes to rent the badminton courts or indoor soccer field to play on. The arena also hosts special training programs which the public can attend. 
I think that the Taufik Idai Arena is very good for the future of badminton. It will help improve the sport and also develop a new breed of Taufiks. Taufik has said that he wants to give this dream to his country that can be used, exploited and give greater meaning to the world of badminton in Indonesia. But does that mean the legend himself will be taking the role of teacher? I have not decided whether or not I will be coaching. There is no guarantee that an ex-world champion or an ex-Olympic champion can be a good coach. What is definite is that I will be there daily. But as for coaching, I'm still not sure as I may be a better player than a coach. Whether he ultimately becomes a coach or not, the training that brought him success lies within him and he knows what's needed to win. We will set our training targets carefully. For example, we will have specific targets when it comes to achieving improvements in timings for running. Same goes for tournaments. We will always need to improve our targets starting from the first round right up to the final stages. Commitment is also very important. As badminton players, we should always focus on playing badminton and try not to be distracted by other things. To be a successful player, one needs to be really focused. If one is easily distracted, it will be very hard for him or her to be a top player. Top player. Badminton. No sport comes close. Coming up, the badminton arena at the London Olympics was in full voice and the action came thick and fast. All the results in just a bit. So stay tuned to Badminton World. Hi, I'm Taufik Hidayat. Teruskan nonton Badminton World. The only results to come out of the badminton world this month were the best of the best. After all the planning and practice, the Olympics took place and the men's singles turned out to be just as exciting as all had hoped, with 28 million Malaysian fans rooting for Lee Chong Wei as he took on Lin Dan in the final. Sadly, just as in Beijing four years ago, Super Dan was just too good again, taking gold but needing a rubber set to do it. For Chong Wei's followers, it was again hard to take. At one time, I thought we were going to get our first goal in our history, but too bad. I think we're going to have to wait another four years, but no more Chong Wei, I think. Chong Wei fight all the way, but it's very disappointing for the whole nation because we are hoping for first goal for the first time in, in, in our history. Definitely, it's very, very sad. Lah. We, are, we are waiting for our first goal, first gold medal, yeah? So it is very, very disappointing. Uh, what can we say? Yeah, after this, there's no more Chong Wei. Nobody to depend on for, for the gold medal. For, for badminton, that is. Yeah. Lee Chong Wei's rubber set defeat to Lin Dan was the climax to a huge final day of Olympic badminton and one that saw a trend familiar to all of us. It was a big win for China and turned out to be just the beginning of an all out assault. In the women's singles, Wang Qixian's replacement at the games, Li Zuri, delivered the gold medal in a Chinese 1-2 when she beat world number one Wang Yihan in a repeat of the All England Open final. It was then double celebration for Zhao Yunlei, who picked up a gold in the mixed doubles with Zhang Nan, and then followed that with another gold in the women's double with Tian Xing. Meanwhile, four pairs were disqualified for illegal team tactics from this category, which meant no joy for the likes of superstars Wang Zhaoli and Yu Yang, Gracia Polly, and Meliana Jahari, and two pairs from South Korea. Finally, it was pure joy in the men's doubles as veteran partners Chai Yun and Fu Haifeng filled the glaring gap on their badminton CVs. After 10 years together, capturing that elusive Olympic gold in a 21-16-21-15 triumph over Matthias Boer, Carsten Mogensen, meaning it was a clean sweep for China in London. Amazingly, it was also the first time that the country had won gold in the men's doubles category. 
So this is what it looks like at the top right now. These are the current standings of all the top international players according to the latest BWF World Rankings. For more information, you can visit BWF's official website. Badminton. No sport comes close. Now it's time to check in with the players again, and this time around, using the plural is exactly right, as we chat to two players, who together have formed possibly the most formidable force in men's doubles over the last decade, Chai Yun and Fu Haifeng. They just capped their already legendary status by winning the first gold medal for China in their division at the London Games and made history doing it. China may be the most successful nation in badminton, winning 38 medals, 28 of them from the women's singles and doubles and mixed doubles tournaments, in addition to the exploits of Lin Dan in the men's singles, but never the men's doubles. So it was a proud moment for the duo, who also managed to better the silver they won in Beijing four years ago. We caught up with the duo just before their Olympic success at the Jarum Indonesian Open and found out what it takes to be the best. I believe our success has a lot to do with our personalities on and off the court. When we are on court, we have never had grievances towards each other. But instead, we always believe in getting to know, understand and encourage each other. We all have our good and bad days on court, but our goal is always the same, which is to win a match. And that is one goal that they never give up on when it comes to game time, as both are focused as one force that has floored the best of the best. But in addition to synchronized characters, which is the result of playing together at the top level for such a long time, each of them are known for their matching skills on court, with Haifeng bringing reliable power to their game, which Chai Yun adds to with his incredible speed. To me, I think the most important factor to a pair's success is the ability to understand each other. They have to understand that everyone has a different personality and you can't expect your partner to be exactly like you. Our understanding and tolerance are the key to the success of our 10-year partnership. Not many have stayed together this long and that says a lot. It's a journey that has brought them one Olympic gold medal and four world championship titles amongst many others, making Chai and Fu the most successful men's doubles pair in badminton history without doubt and they've expressed the will to continue their career together as long as they can after the London Olympics. Which is ominous news for their rivals as they are just one part of the Chinese team of superstars that in recent times have simply dominated the sport in all five categories. Along with Lin Dan, the three Wangs, Shi Xian, Yi Han and Xin, and the likes of Zhao Yunlei, Zhang Nan, China has an iron grip on badminton around the world which will not soon be shaken off. Chinese players like Chai Yun and Hai Feng have effectively become the benchmark for their counterparts to emulate, if possible. Badminton. No sport comes close. 2012 has been a hectic year for the players, with it being an Olympic year, but now things get back to normal, which means it's back to the accumulation of Super Series points as the China Masters kicks into life. That's immediately followed by the Japan Open, and to cap off the month, the Indonesia Grand Prix Gold will also be staged. For more information, visit the BWF official website. Before we finish up this month, it's again time to check in with our favourite Super Series moment, which is from the Singapore Open, the last Super Series event to be conducted before the Olympics kicked off. Plenty in store for you next month, so don't forget to catch up on all the big names in the biggest games of the 2012 badminton season. That's next month, so it's goodbye from us for now from Badminton World. It's the world we know.